Well, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, our distinguished uh, panelists and all our participants. A very warm welcome to this interactive session organized by the Universal Spirituality and Humanity Foundation, which has been organizing the World Conference of Humanity, Power and Spirituality from 2010. Under the inspiration and guidance of Dr. H.P. Kanoria, the chairman, a spectacular platform where spirituality meets humanity. This conference has witnessed over a thousand speakers from different parts and vocations from all over the world, including humanists, illuminates, dignitaries and professionals, leaders and learned men. They all came and enlightened the conference on how to enrich the body, mind and soul in its integrality and to make our life more meaningful with a sense of purpose and direction. We have been organizing several interactive sessions on various topics, and this special seminar is going to be very informative and enlightening, especially as we are all passing through unprecedented and challenging times. The topic for today's session is navigating the new normal for mental well being. We have with us today eminent speakers on our panel. We have Madhulika Kanoria, who is the Vice Chairperson of Srihari Global ISD Foundation. She is the Trustee of Asset Survivors and Women Welfare Foundation, which is a leading non-for-profit, non-governmental organization working for the prevention of all forms of violence against women in India since 2010. She's also the former President of Lady Study Group and Indian Women Network of CII. We have with us Meenu Budhya. She is a psychotherapist and a counselor with a unique perspective to mental health issues. Her vision was to introduce a one-stop solution for all problems related to psychological well-being and to break the stigma surrounding mental health issues. Her focus is on making quality of affordable mental health care easily available to the community. With this mission, she founded Caring Minds, a super specialty mental health clinic. She's also the founder director at I Can Fly, an institute for special needs, and, is, and has been felicitated with the numerous awards for her invaluable contribution in the field of mental health and special needs education. Her mantra is, don't just imagine it, do it. We also have with us Rita Bhimani, who is an iconic figure in the profession of corporate public relations, in which she has been spent several dec decades uh, writing, speaking, and teaching the subject. A master's in journalism from USA. She runs her own PR consultancy firm, Rhythm Communications. She's also a versatile columnist, a professor of media studies, an author of five books. The first two on PR and a coffee table books are on 100 years of Calcutta School of Music and Yuga Revival. She has conducted numerous programs in India and other countries on core values and corporate etiquette, backed up by columns in mainline dailies on the subject. Her red sofa conversations have seen numerous sellers of note in a one-on-one -on -one with her from authors, film directors, actors, artists, to sporting and musical personalities and management gurus. A documentary on Raja Ram Mohan Roy focuses on the great social reformer. During the lockdown, she has started on a sixth book, Presence Perfect. I would request all the participants to put forth their questions on the chat box and we will be happy to pass on the same to our speakers. I will now request Smadulika Kanoria to take up over the proceedings of this interactive session, which I'm sure you will be enjoying. Good evening and a warm welcome to all our participants. It gives me great pleasure to have two renowned and talented personalities of Kolkata, Mrs. Rita Bhimani and Mrs. Meenu Budhia. I would like to thank both of them for accepting our invitation and joining us today. 
and uh, i this i know very well they are very busy so thank you so much for taking out time from your busy schedule now without further delay i would like to start today's session with minu so i would be asking question both to minu and ritadi right so one question to minu and one to ritadi so i would begin begin with minu so first question to you minu minu your motto is imperf imperfection is beauty and you believe that happiness is an inside job could you elaborate on these very unique thoughts and please tell us about your centers uh, caring mind institutes I, i mean caring mind and i can fly also so good evening i am honored to be invited by sri foundation here so first i will start with imperfection is beauty so there is a term coined by tyra bank that is flaw sum that means something is awesome because of its flaws not in spite of its flaws and also there is also an art in japan to mend broken pottery that is king sugi where they uh, decorate the broken pottery by gold and lacquer and ma make making it even beautiful and costlier they don't try to make it original and so i also believe like it also um, uh, resonate with my own life story uh, and i always say that uh, for myself that it is more beautiful for having been broken and the second is what you say that um, happiness is an inside uh, job so iska main hindi mein bolungi ki kis kasturi mrig na bhi base par mrig chahu disa ghume तो मैं बोलना चाहूंगी कि जैसे इसका मतलब ये है कि कस्तूरी मिर्ग की नाभि में ही होता है उसके अंदर ही होता है पर फिर भी वो पागल की तरह चारों तरफ ढूंढता है तो खुशी हम लोगों के अंदर है हम लोगों को वो अंदर ही ढूंढ मतलब हम अगर हम लोग भी ऑलवेज भी ट्राई टू फाइंड हैप्पीनेस फ्रॉम आउटसाइड थिंग्स मेटीरियलिस्टिक थिंग्स बट एक्चुअली हैप्पीनेस इज ऑलवेज एन इनसाइड जॉब इट शुड नॉट बी वी शुड नॉट फाइंड हैप्पीनेस फ्रॉम आउटसाइड मेटीरियलिस्टिक थिंग्स इफ यू फाइंड हैप्पीनेस फ्रॉम आवर इनर पीस इनर जॉय दैट विल ऑलवेज बी परमानेंट बट इफ यू फाइंड हैप्पीनेस फ्रॉम आउटसाइड लाइक uh materialistic things that will be temporary so and now uh, madhulika coming to your third thing that i can fly so caring mind uh, i start with my uh, very short uh, story that caring behind caring mind there is a story like my second daughter uh, uh, is a special child so when i got to know that she is a special child so i with her i uh, went around the world for her treatment and therapies so along with the with her therapies i got myself certified and when i accepted the truth that she is a special child i uh, started sitting at wellview clinic and i became a, a psychotherapist and counselor and then i realized that there is no one clinic where all issue related to mental health is under one uh, under one umbrella uh, in calcutta there is no one center which, which exist then it gave birth to caring minds here i want to clear one thing that caring mind is not for only special children or not for children it is for everybody for you me and everybody so that gave birth to caring mind and caring mind is a clinic it's an, a kind of opd where uh, where we have all kind of clinical services it is for psychiatrists doctors for clinical psychologists for psychotherapists speech therapists pediatric physiotherapists special educators and also we have a um, uh, academia is a teaching wing where we teach psychology related subjects uh, which are recognized by jadavpur university and calcutta university and the second is second institute is i can fly which is actually for special needs individuals Uh, so the difference between caring minds and i can fly caring mind is for everybody and i can fly is only for special needs individuals so that is we train special needs children for different kind of uh, we with uh, for different kind of 
uh, they are uh, for special needs, like all kind of uh, abilities and all we teach them. And uh, also there is a cafe which is run by uh, special needs individuals. So these are three institutes which is run by me. And also I have I've founded them. Thank you, Meenu. That is great. And your happiness ka tumne bataya was that oh, everyone should learn that. So there won't be any uh, misery in the world. That is very true. Happiness is within us. So Papa, now it's very difficult to practice that. <laughs> it's very, very difficult to practice. Yeah. Now, Rita Di, you have written six books till now. That is great. And last year, you wrote one entire book during pandemic. How did you manage to concentrate during this stressful time? That's a lovely question, Madhulika. And before that, of course, I would like to congratulate Minu for the work she is doing, uh, because I feel both as a consumer of her product and as a communicator, the way they have communicated this to us is something incredible. And I wish, Minu, this can be replicated all over the country and, and outside, you know, in the outside world too. And I'm sure it's going to happen. But right now, what you have done is, is uh, amazing. And you talked about imperfection. So I'll, I'll come to um, your um, question in a minute. When you uh, had planned this um, event today, remember I had told you, oh my God, it's going to be on Friday the 13th. <laughs> so, <laughs> and now we have all these superstitions that are uh, ingrained in us. And uh, I think these are the imperfections that we live with. And I think we should get out of that. And I just came across a word which Shashi Tharoor used a couple of days ago in one of his many articles that he writes. And he calls it, uh, you know, there's a word for the fear of number 13, because I have always feared it a bit because I've had a couple of bits of uh, bad luck on, on some of my projects uh, because they were started on the 13th or there were 13 people involved and so on. But that's another story. So you know what the word is? And I have to say it like Shashi Tharoor. It's called tris kaireka phobia. It's a very long word. And it's the fear of number 13. <laughs> so I think today is going to be fearless. And it's going, you know, it's going to be a free-for-all discussion. So to come to uh, your question, yes, um, it was a difficult time for me. Um, I had had... Uh, major personal loss at that time and I felt the best way to keep on um, uh, is to keep going, to keep writing, to keep uh, uh, positive and uh, happy and to keep doing what I have been trained to do what most, what I'm passionate about most, which is writing. So that is how I managed to write my fifth book and the wonderful thing was that um, I could actually interact with our uh, uh, printers and our publishers online. I had to do all the proofing online. We had to do designing online. And finally, the book came out. And it really came out beautifully. It's a beautiful coffee table book. I think Ninu came for the inauguration. And Madhulika, you uh, were also invited. Yeah, I and I, you couldn't make it. But it's, it, it came out well. So I feel that nothing should stop you. And I think the pandemic perhaps actually uh, kept us grouted to the ground and uh, kept us in and kept us uh, focused on whatever we wanted to do. I think that was important. So there are a lot of positives to, that have come out of staying home, staying indoors, being able to study, being able to do research, being able to write and uh, that's how it happened. Great. Superb, Rita So now, uh, Minu, so now next question is, it is uh, very difficult for children under five to comprehend this new normal. How can we help them to manage this situation? 
and what are the signs that a child is that a child is depressed actually first step is to figure out how much your child understands so the very simple questions we should ask do you know why we stay in the house do you know why we are wearing mask and also um, we can explain them by um, you know um, by their favorite cartoons by pictorial you know nowadays kids are very smart that's why we have taken this five years of age because the the moment they are five, five plus they understand everything so that's why below five so um, by their favorite cartoon that um, we can make we uh, the villain that uh, favorite cartoon is defeating the uh, uh, the villain and the villain is the uh, covid so and also we can help them by making um, mask they can also design the mask and make simple mask so and you can also share with them that we are we are scared too so there is nothing uh, not, nothing worrisome we can we are scared and and there is nothing um, wrong in getting scared so mummy papa is scared scared and also you can be scared sometimes so and also we should maintain a positive at atmosphere at home and also with kids all the time we should not be uh, watching uh, tv news you know we can watch but all the time we are uh, watching uh, negative tv news then uh, if kids are seeing that mummy papa all the time seeing uh, so many deaths so many so the kids they won't be uh, comprehending so much but they are see seeing all the time negative news so it's not very good so and keep reassuring your child and be honest that how much they are loved and that they are safe and they um, mom and, do, and dad i will always take care of them and about the uh, like uh, signs and symptoms because they are actually not going to school and so uh, there are uh, uh, quite chances that they may be depressed because they are totally at home so signs and symptoms are that when if they are they are appetite either they are eating too much or if they are eating too little and and if they are sleep it is sleep is disturbed either they are sleeping too much or they are sleeping too little or they are clinging to you or they are not interested in the their favorite things which they were very interested at at one once upon a time and they are not they are not any more wanted to meet their friends um, or not uh, wanted to watch their cartoon movies and all so uh, all these are the signs uh, that we should look, watch out for so you mean to say parents have a very important role in this definitely at, at least for a five, under 5 under 5 you know they yeah. should understand spend some time uh, and uh, do a lot of things to make them happy yeah that is very important thanks me and for pa parents also like uh, they should also understand the uh, depression or any kind of anxiety it is most treatable um, um, the depression and anxiety is the most treatable thing in a mental uh, illness you re it's very easily curable especially in children yeah all all kind even children even adults every in adult also it yeah, is easy yeah, yeah. well if if it is detected and got to so know that's why time. it's very important that it is detective early okay yeah thanks me uh, rita di menu has spoken about depression in children and adult so can you please tell us uh, how to keep children and family joyfully engaged she has talked about it little bit and the impact of pandemic what is your perspective of it, of it? and the impact of pandemic on family which is at home and work like for adult it is very difficult to uh, cope up with their family life and uh, their work because lot of uh, as they are not going physically attending office but then how do they manage like women especially yeah i think uh, this is again another very relevant question and i must say again that um, uh, minu has talked about how depression can be uh, tackled 
easily. We, we think that it's going to be a very, very long process, but obviously uh, you've made a fine art and science of it. So I think that's one area that we can be confident about the fact that these things can be treated. But uh, to come to your question about family relationships, especially during the pandemic, um, I feel that it has been a blessing in disguise. Because uh, imagine that the children are getting time with their parents. The children are also getting time with grandparents. Grandparents are so, so very lucky to have these kids around them and they come to them and you know, they can, they can play with them, they can uh, do so many things with them. Uh, uh, so it's husband, wife, children, grandparents. It's uh, one big family uh, that is bonding together. And I think the pandemic has created this, this big bonding and the relationships that go with it. But as far as uh, what you asked about uh, people who are not going to work, men or women, both, both sets of people are people who are, have careers. And imagine suddenly uh, being faced with this whole prospect of working from home. Uh, disadvantage is that uh, there are too many distractions at home, whereas once you go off to office, you're there in your, in your cabin and at your workplace, and with your surrounded by colleagues and you're tackling uh, whatever has to be done in the workplace. Whereas when you're at home, uh, you have to discipline yourself. And I myself find that personally, I find that um, <clears throat> when I start my day after doing all the usual uh, uh, walking and exercising and everything else, and you know, once the newspaper reading is out of the way, I actually get formally ready to start the day. You can't be grungy and, and be around in a t-shirt and shorts and so on. It's, it's so easy to want to do that because you're at home. But if you can actually dress up, you don't have to overdress, but just be in something that, uh, that uh, shows that, that you're in control of yourself, you're in control of your mind, that's when you can start working. And I think this is true of men and women. Um, uh, men would have the advantage if they have a housewife uh, who's a companion who will be cooking them wonderful meals so that they can go ahead with their long eight, nine hours, whatever it is, and in between be treated to meals. So it's, it's all there. I think treat it all as being able to work, being able to rest, being able to be happy with your own home surroundings, which you may not have focused on. People have, have improved their home environments. All that has happened. So uh, this has been, and Minu was talking about the fact that mama, papa sometimes could be watching TV and watching all the wrong things, but you could also be watching the right things. Yeah. You can also be uh, bonding with the children and there's so much so much on on netflix and on oh everything else you know a hot star and this that there's huge amounts of entertainment to choose from so i think sometimes there can be uh, entertainment that the whole family can watch together uh, and sometimes of course people can watch it separately so i don't think we we can ever be uh, deprived of any kind of any form of either um, entertainment or information or of doing things. It's, it's all there. We just have to uh, put it in different silos and, and be happy that, that uh, we can carry on doing what we are doing. Yeah, that's great, Ritali. And I know a lot of friends of mine or uh, family, they say we have rediscover rediscovered ourselves. A lot of things which we didn't do for so long we have come back to those, like uh, any hobbies or a passion, whether reading or a, um, this music or anything else. So that is something great, you know. So this is a very good positive uh, part of con pandemic, <laughs> COVID. I know, I I've, I've found that, you know, we could go into the net and find wonderful new recipes and, 
And right in the beginning from last year, when the pandemic started, I know that we all started making masks. That yeah. was a great big occup occupation. Then the next thing was trying out recipes, showing it off to friends, taking <laughs> pictures and saying, this is what I did, you know? And uh, the, then various other things happened. Then, uh, then taking part in all these discussions on, uh, uh, you know, on Zoom. So that's another thing. I found that um, my board meetings, you could be far better connected when you're on a Zoom uh, board meeting rather than when you're physically meeting because then you tend to waste a little time. But mm. here you have to finish within a certain time. So lots of good things are happening all good the time. Happened. Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. Minu, uh, now next question is, COVID-19 has caused many people to lose one or more members of their family and friends. How can someone cope with this grief? Actually, this is a, a, a question which is very close to my heart because I just lost my father. So losing one spouse, relative, father can be very difficult to process. The people who we are close to play a major part in our lives leave a vacuum who they leave. But and also I just realized, you know, it's a very, because I just realized myself what you feel when you are grieving. So everybody has a different way of handling grief and, uh, and he should be allowed to do that. No one should be distracted to do anything else to do. Like, um, I am I am just uh, telling uh, out of my own experience. Like I distracted my mother to do something else, which I found out was not right. Means uh, every every everybody should be given uh, time to heal them. I, anybody should not be distracted to uh, heal anything faster. Everybody, सबको एक time देना चाहिए कि उसको एक जितना टाइम उसको चाहिए उसको वो टाइम देना चाहिए कि उतना टाइम उसको मिलना चाहिए उसको अपना हील करने का टाइम उसको मिलना चाहिए उसको डिस्ट्रैक्ट करना नहीं चाहिए ये मैंने अप, अपने फादर के टाइम ये सीखा है और हर एक जन को अपना डाउन टाइम चाहिए रीता दी के अला अभी रीता दी से बैठे इसको कोई जान नहीं सकता शी ऑल्सो जस्ट सफर्ड ए लॉस सो एवरीबडी and every everybody should be allowed to cry and show his emotion in whatever way uh, he wants to mourning a death for days weeks or months is quite natural um, and if it is continues beyond this period and begin to interfere your days to life you may need professional help but only if it is um, if it is uh, disturbing your life after beyond a point of time. Otherwise, it is very natural uh, to have uh, the, these kind of feelings. And to uh, and sometimes you need to do, you can make a photo album and sometimes you uh, you can make a video out of, um, healing fast if you do all these things. You, and you can, you can make good scrapbook bana sakte hain and aur maine kai baar dekha hai ki jaise mummy ko ek guilt ho gaya tha ki ki maine ye nahi kiya papa ke liye to kai baar you also have a guilt ki ye cheez nahi ki to theek hai feeling guilty is also all right so ye ye maine uh, i just felt that ki ye sab sab tarah ka feelings is all right Nothing is wrong in your grieving process. Nothing is wrong. Everybody's grieving process is different. Koi ka grieving process same nahi hota. Each person's grief, matlab sabka process is unique, is unique to everyone. I think mere se jada Rita di ko iske baare mein elaborate karna chahiye. Yeah, please Rita. Yeah, sure. Minu, I think what you have said is um, very good philosophy that you should let people grieve in their own way and the way you have also um, advised, um, uh, you know, your mother. I think that that is, um, the, the guidance is very important. Uh, in my own case, I'm glad you brought it up. It was uh, something unimaginable because remember that uh, we had been married 
50 years. Yes. So it's a very long and very joyous and a beautiful uh, uh, period that, that we spent together. And we had a lot in common, everything, you know, our writing, the books we read, the music we went through together. There was a tremendous amount of sharing that was there. And one fine day, it was all gone. Now, what do you do? Do you put a stop to your life? Because then people will also start moving away from you. The moment you start moping and getting into your own skin and, uh, and uh, pushing people away, I don't think that was not my style. My style was just keep on working from morning to night. Just keep on writing, doing all the things that, that you needed to do. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of paperwork that had to be done. Our son was with me all these months. Uh, and then getting the house back in order. So, you know, keeping busy also means that you can, you can keep your mind away from, uh, from that grief. You grieve internally. As you say, I also brought out a lot of pictures and um, you know kept looking at them and kept rereading his articles took out his books and of course we had wonderful wonderful memorial service when people joined in from all over the world and that gave a great joy and great satisfaction that there were people who remembered him so well so uh, so we went through this whole phase in this kind of way we wrote it in a very interesting way yeah Kishore Bhai lived a very happy and very yes, yes. Uh, interesting life and you spend so beautiful time with him and learn so much. So that is really great. So Rita Di, um, I think we are talking about it, but again, I want you to talk uh, more about um, like how pandemic, um, like a lot of people, either they have become fragile or they have become stronger they can face um, any challenge in life now. So what is your take on this? Yeah, I think um, uh, when we talk about people's um, uh, fragility, uh, of course it's there. We've all become scared, scared that something can happen to us. We are here one minute and we're gone the next. We're looking at people who have suffered tremendously from COVID, we have seen so much suffering, not just amongst our immediate uh, circles, but all around the world. Now, I feel that um, uh, in all this fragility and all, people also want to grasp at success stories. And in this, I think media has played a very important role, but Particularly, I would like to bring in things like the Olympics, which took place. Now, what happened was, as a result of that, as a result of people watching a lot of other games also, some people were watching cricket, some people were watching Wimbledon earlier and the French Open earlier. So they were uh, getting a vicarious pleasure out of seeing other people succeed so well in these various sports. And then came the Olympics when we bristled with a huge sense of pride every time we saw our athletes performing so well. And suddenly we came out of our uh, fear psychosis and suddenly we were seeing that uh, they were out there performing uh, uh, despite all the problems that they had faced in getting to uh, Japan, but they were, they were doing it so well and they, they conquered all their problems and their fears, I think uh, we saw that many of them came from underprivileged backgrounds. And that also gave us courage to see how somebody who was so poor, who just had a broken hockey stick and hardly a roof over her head and uh, hardly enough milk to drink to be strong enough to go out and play, how she conquered that and she went out and played. So a lot of these stories came out. And it is also a triumph for the organizers of the Olympics, because for Japan to say, no, we're going to go ahead and do it. And they did it in spite of 
all the problems that they could have faced, they, they did it. They did it. They, the medals they made were all out of recycled material. They got people in Japan uh, to, to contribute all their broken mobile phones and they, they recycled all that and put that together. So everything was recycled. They were quite amazing, actually, the Japanese. At, they've always been innovative anyway. So these were things that, that uh, gave us more a sense of hope, the fact that uh, we can conquer, we can do, we can do, as Minu says, anything, you know, anything is possible to be achieved. So that is what I found uh, you could get out of this, uh, uh, the, the, what you call the fragility of mindset. You could come out of that. Yes, absolutely. So now, uh, Minu, uh, senior citizens, especially those family living abroad, have faced increasing lo loneliness and helplessness. So they are either at home without their children or they can't meet uh, the kids staying abroad and because the flights are not operating and all that. So how can they cope up with these feelings? And do you have any sessions for them and they're your center? Yeah, yeah. I would say just like technology uh, has many minus points, but it has many plus also. Plus points. So, also. Yeah. So uh, we can, um, since everybody can schedule a video call, uh, you know, fixed time. Everybody can have a family fixed video calls uh, with um, everybody. And at least for 10 minutes, everybody can have a video call, WhatsApp video call, and they can make a group of the whole family where everybody keep on updating about each other's help and we also have started a, a free helpline service just last month where anybody can call from anywhere and can ask for counseling so that is also uh, very good and um, a person can be anonymous There's no need to uh, say their identity so a person has to be okay for asking and getting help. And I have also, in between, I was reading in newspapers, there are so many uh, helplines have started for senior citizens. And also the people who are staying abroad, they can, uh, whose friends are there in Kolkata, in like Kolkata or anywhere, they can ask them to have, help their parents for, you know, ration, medicines. And so I don't think now it is because of technology, we are, um, we are not, we can really be uh, helping our senior citizens and for uh, entertainment there netflix like rita Di was saying netflix sony live there are so many we just have to uh, have the subscription and uh, we can have live entertainment so now it is with technology technology has many minus but they have many if we use it smartly it has many plus points also yes absolutely because yeah. they definitely had tough time in the beginning because they are not used to this technology world and all that. So they are used to only physically meeting their kids or doing everything physically. But then gradually, I think they got used to it. And like in um, during lockdown, whenever we had any uh, 60th birthday, 75th birthday, we celebrated it all online. So it yeah. was wonderful and very different. So uh, all and these senior citizens, we all can, they can do these kind of celebrate every moment. You know, we have to see positive. Uh, we can't see, uh, there's no point seeing negative all the time. Uh, and nowadays, uh, you can be any part of the world and can be very close. Mm, can yeah. be close In fact, uh, here I'd like to add something. Uh, since you're talking about uh, 60th and 75th birthdays and all these things, um, what we did during the la whole of last year and, you know, coming into this year also, we have a group, I mean, all of us have various groups and we have this particular group, um, which, uh, where of course, one of the big strengths of our group is Usha Otto. Yes. And for somebody who is such a celebrity herself, such a busy person, I can't tell you what she has done with us. You know, she has treated us like 
children at, uh, uh, at some times. And she has actually made us do um, three or four videos, which, uh, uh, you know, she, we had to practice, practice, practice. One was a dance video, one was a music video, and, uh, and she put it all together. So it gave us plenty of uh, combined activity, but we were all doing it, remember, from our own homes. Yes, yes. So she would send us uh, the sessions done by someone, you know, who was uh, a professional. Sometimes she would show us uh, the things herself. So we would be looking at that. We would be practicing it. She would practically be taking a, a danda and uh, say, come on, come on, girls. Now you, you better practice because you've got to get it perfect and we've got to get it done. So uh, there was this beautiful number called Jerusalem, which became famous all over the world. Wonderful foot tapping number. First of all, Usha herself, she mastered that particular song. Then she made all of us in our individual homes do it in various guises. We had to be in jeans and shirts. Then we had to be all dressed up um, in our silver kameez, saris, whatever it is. And then she, when she spliced it together, we couldn't believe it. It was like a professional video. And uh, not only that, she actually did a release of it, physical release. The same thing she did with a song called Hamko Man Ki Shakti Dena. Dena yes. When she, she made all of us, everyone sings, some people lip synced. I uh, did it, play the piano because I can't sing. So various things like that. And again, it was, uh, uh, you know, it was actually released on, on the net, you know, through Facebook. There was Hariharan present. She got a big from Ghosh. She got all these celebs. I mean, everyone, was, no one would ever say no to her. And all of us felt so proud because our names were there in the title, in the titling, and we could share it with all our friends and feel so happy. And people felt happy listening to a song like that because it was a very inspirational song. It came at the right time. So there you are, you know, you, you, uh, these are uh, all the activities that, that can also be done, which can be done in a group, but singly like madhulika you'll probably be doing later when you learn about filmmaking <laughs> for the lady yeah, study like, group i would say it i can fly our special children if they can um, from their own homes if they can make a video why not we you know <laughs> yes yes exactly absolutely. amazing amazing absolutely so Rita Di, um you should talk something about media and journalism like uh, you own your uh, consultancy, PR consultancy firm, professor in media studies, right? Master in journalism. So please talk more about media. What, uh, what do you think are the positive and negative roles uh, played by media about this pandemic? And uh, talk about your book also a little bit. Presence, mm -hmm. perfect. I'll come to that. But uh, yes, again, I'm glad you're focusing on, on these very pertinent, uh, uh, I would say problems, but also solutions, in the sense that uh, people love this media bashing. They say, oh, media, to faltu hai, wo to publish karte hai, this is this, that, you know how it is. Uh, but I feel that we have to give a lot of credit to the media. Uh, two things. One is, during the pandemic, remember, they had a very big responsibility to try and bring us a lot of information, a lot of insight, a lot of analysis on what was going on with COVID. So they had to have fan out and get a whole lot of reporters and special correspondents who actually went out and covered. They also uh, took their life in their hands and they would go out to the hospitals and so on. And uh, <clears throat> they, would, they would cover they would come out with all the facts that we want to know because we all were worried. What is it? We wanted to know so much. And it's the media who fed us this kind of information on whatever we wanted to know. They analyzed it for us. They gave us 
lots of information. So they had to do their research and uh, give it to us. That was one aspect. The second aspect is some of the wonderful, positive, good luck stories. What we call when we are teaching uh, media studies, we call it developmental journalism. You know, there's this yellow journalism when you, you talk about uh, all the dirt that you sweep out from under the carpet and you bring it out and everybody loves to see a bad story, so to say. But I think uh, uh, what the media have done is also bring out some of the very, very poignant and pertinent stories. You know, uh, uh, people who are poor helping others, people from corporates who have come out and given very generously uh, uh, and actually done a lot of hands-on work, grassroots work to, to uh, be able to help with what is going on in the situation. So lots and lots of stories have come out, which I think we should also be thankful for to the media. So the media, I think on the whole, it's positive, positive. One is uh, as a harbinger of information and the other one is also to give us good positive stories. And that is where I come to my sixth book, which again is being written now during the lockdown. Uh, great opportunity because I start early in the morning and keep writing. It's a 300 page book and it is called Presence Perfect where I'm trying to say that people have knowledge and wisdom at their command, but they have to have a certain presentability, the way you can project your image, the way you can project what you're doing, the way companies can also uh, uh, bring out their brand value against competition. So, you know, these are, these are the things that come out. So I've interviewed a wide range of people, people from startups, people in, uh, you know, from diplomacy, people in the uh, art world of the arts, of music and everything else, education. So it's, it's, um, it's a humongous project. And I hope it will get written soon, at least in the next month or so, I have to complete it. You have to give yourself a deadline. You know, we've been working on deadlines from the time I started our, uh, our whole journalism career. Both my husband and I, we'd be madly typing away at two different typewriters before all these computers came. And it was always deadline oriented. So unless, I think all of us need deadlines, don't we, to do anything. You have to have a target, you have to have a goal, and then you can, you can do what, the, the kind of work that, that you want to do. So, sorry. So now, uh, Minu, that's great, Ritadi. Um, so what are the major signs that um, you have uh, discussed about, like, how do you, um, in children, you have um, yeah. told us about uh, how do, uh, what are the symptoms they have uh, uh, for the professional help. So what kind of professional help kids and uh, adults should get uh, while when they, they are depressed. Whether they should go to psychiatrist straight away or go to any kind of institutes like you or uh, discuss with the family, what should what is the first step to do? The first step is um, accepting. I think that just like what people will say, I Lok think the biggest stigma is what people will say. The first, uh, first step is accepting that you need help. Hmm. Yes, I will say for myself that as a mental health professional, we also need help sometimes. Yes. So, so accepting that I need help, we need help, that is the first step. And after that, um, you are not there to decide whether you go to a psychiatrist, whether you go to a psychologist, you just go to either your general physician or a mental health clinic. They are, uh, there are professionals who will decide uh, to whom do you should go to. 
means uh, according to your symptoms whether how severe they are they are people to decide you are not there to decide whether whom to you go to so there are people there are professionals who will decide according to your symptoms who do you go to so if you are unable to manage your regular like uh, i'm telling the major signs and symptoms like um, your regular personal professional family public life you are unable to manage that means it's time to go to a professional yeah because what you say ki log kya kahenge that is a big uh, thing among people now because they half the time they don't discuss even with their family and uh, the family don't understand the thing is because uh, many uh, families i have seen ke don't they feel no no you are not well uh, you have to get involved in something then only you will start feeling better but they maine dekha ki housewife log agar bolti hai ki mere ko man nahi hai jaane ka kaam karne ka to zyada tar log bolte hai bahana kar rahi hai bahana kar rahe hain bahut ये बहुत खराब चीज है पर ऐसे ही होता है हम लोगों के इंडियन सोसाइटी में जो कि बहुत खराब चीज है हम लोगों को ये स्टिग्मा से निकलना होगा कि लोग क्या कहेंगे मतलब आधे बार तो हम लोग एक्सेप्ट ही करने रेडी नहीं है कि हम लोगों को हेल्प चाहिए इज द बिगेस्ट स्टेप एग्जैक्टली लाइक वो दीपिका पादुकोन इज ऑल्सो वर्किंग ऑन दिस एंड आई थिंक शी हैज वन फाउंडेशन फॉर depression Laugh, uh, love oh, oh, uh, huh, huh. Huh. so that she the, now lot of people are coming with this problem openly so that you know uh, i think mindset will change gradually i'm sure yeah, we have come a long way but still a long way to go <laughs> still long way what is uh, your take on this rita d well i think uh, of course there are uh, there is professional help like you would go to say minus clinic and others as you say deepika has started something uh, but there is this other phenomenon um, that is uh, that exists in india and that is uh, especially you talk you were talking about housewives is people going to gurus spiritual gurus yes yes you are right yes. so that's where they find a lot of solace because mm-hmm. obviously they can't really go to a psychiatrist you know log kya kahenge exactly what you said so uh the next best thing is to to find a spiritual guru and there are so many of them who can uh, you know just going to gurus talk. is accepted by the family <laughs> yes exactly exactly so adding to this point um, so do you think rita ji ke this pandemic has made people spiritually inclined and uh, more human like we have seen people are uh, helping each other they are uh, reaching out to a lot of people to help so what is uh, what do you think yes because i think spirituality is not just a matter of sitting with prayer beads and just praying you know it's in yes, no, no, spirituality either. also means how you can reach out to others as you say and be able to help because people are suddenly getting out of their own skins and and they're saying oh something else is happening around me maybe i can i can uh, provide a helping hand with money with uh, other means that uh, that one can do so this is how they are doing it uh, but having said that i think um, uh, people have also become spiritual because they are scared they are scared for their lives they are scared for what can happen to them so prayer has become an important part of their lives they do that and uh, there are a lot of rituals that are performed also in in uh, people's homes so that part has happened maybe it's it's for the better people are actually reciting a lot of mantras which they never knew before so that that is also happening but this thing of um, uh empathy is also something that i feel should be looked at as a part of spirituality yes. and humanity which is what uh, the stray foundation stands for yeah because we have seen lot of people whether in villages or uh, obviously the all the um, corporates and all they are doing good work for people but even in villages people are helping especially this time when there were lack of oxygen and uh, hospital bed 
so people open their schools their colleges and uh, so that is something great work what uh, i think people tried their best to help each other even hotels yes even Five hotels, star hotels uh, they they made their uh, some of their facilities available um, for convalescing patients mm -hmm. yeah definitely they did it question uh, so here, I think the questions which I had is uh, all done. So now we have some questions from uh, the audience uh, participants. Uh, question from Sanjay Budhia only. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your feeling about reading newspaper online during COVID so versus physical newspaper in hand with a cup of tea. Uh, is that question aimed at your wife or am I going to answer oh, it? Oh, you, question? you, Rita the you. It's for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think for wife. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, let me tell you, I hate online newspapers. I just hate it. And I hate it when I am published online also because I don't know how many people are reading it. I'm not one of those big bloggers and influencers who are paid uh, 30, 40 lakhs a minute for uh, just uh, speaking out uh, something, some, some rubbish that they want to. No, I believe in the physical newspaper. I get about three or four newspapers every single day. <clears throat> and after my walk and everything, I sit back, read the newspaper. And as you say, you need that cup of coffee or tea. Tea is my, I have my, either my Rajiling tea or my masala chai and read uh, all the masala there is and all the other stuff that's in the newspapers. There's plenty to read. You know what I was telling you about that newspapers uh, can give you lots of information, lots of opinions. You need these things. These are also your food for thought, for living. So yes, the physical newspaper still exists for me. <laughs> absolutely, I absolutely because I know a lot of people they uh, refuse to get newspapers for one year or more than that because of um, virus uh, coming with that newspaper. So, oh, but, by the way, I spray the newspaper that I do. Okay. Yeah, you spray the newspaper. That that is also important. So now gradually, but people are getting it. So. Uh, the Sanjay Budhya is saying yes, same here. <laughs> so is there uh, any more question? No, right. So we have, I think, covered everything. That is why uh, participants are thinking not to, uh, what to ask no more. <laughs> so anyway, uh, now it's coming to end of the session. So my heartfelt thanks to Meenu and Rita Di for this wonderful session. It was extremely engaging, extremely informative, and very, very interesting. So once again, I thank both of you, and I would like to thank to our participants also. So thank you, Pinu and Rita Di. Good night. Please take care and stay safe. We also enjoyed the session. Very much. <laughs> We enjoyed it extremely, and you have finished it on time, which is the great thing. Yes, there's exactly. also that that time exactly. management, which time is management. Happening. It's <laughs> very Actually, important. Started great. Time. That's why it finished on time. Yes, yes. We we were very like we were here uh, quarter to uh, five. Sorry, quarter to six. Okay. Bye. Okay, Thank, bye. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.